go. Okay, well, we got this mineral in a new shipment. Um, unfortunately, they're unlabeled. And so what we're trying to do is identify these minerals. Um, so this is how we do it. You know, first thing I tend to look at is overall shape. This thing is somewhat elongated. It's got crystal faces here. It's terminated along what I think is the C-axis. Now, if you look down the C-axis, you can see four sides that are perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. So it's probably a orthorhombic uh, crystal. It's clear. And the other thing is it's quite dense. There are not many minerals that are clear and also quite dense. So this, by my own experience, feel is probably somewhere between three and four grams per cubic centimeter. The other interesting feature is when you look along these crystal faces, you will see vertical striations or parallel to the C-axis. Um, that's a clue. So my guess is this is topaz. And topaz is a uh, uh, aluminosilicate uh, mineral. It has fluorine in it, and it's typically formed in the hydrothermal exhalation uh, products of rhyolitic magmas, generally uh, water-poor ones. Um, and so one way we can be sure that this is topaz is topaz has a hardness of eight. Are there other minerals that have hardnesses of eight or higher? Uh, yes. Diamond, ruby. Yeah, diamonds and ruby. Well, this is not a diamond. Uh, and it's not a ruby or corundum. So we're pretty good if we can determine if it has a hardness of eight. So what I do is I'll take quartz. It's a great reference mineral. They're cheap, you can buy a lot of them. And it has a hardness of seven. So if my quartz can scratch this, then I know it's not topaz. If it can't, I'm pretty sure it's topaz. Now, normally I wouldn't do this at home with a nice crystal like this, you might damage it, but I'm pretty confident this is topaz. So I'm gonna go ahead and scratch it here in a place you can't see very well. Um, and it looks like my quartz cannot scratch this mineral, so I think we got topaz. And there you go. That's how you identify minerals.